Whoa, it's Legacy of Kane Defiance. It is, at this moment, the last in the Legacy of Kane series. Hopefully there are more coming, but, you know, I'm not going to hold my breath on that. I'm going to be playing the PC version here, so let's jump into this thing. I got all my settings set up, and I'm ready to go. Loading. Given the choice, whether to rule a corrupt and failing empire, or to challenge the fates for another throw, a better throw against one's destiny, what was a king to do? One can only match, move by move, the machinations of fate, and thus defy the tyrannous stars. So I returned to the sanctuary of my enemy, the fortress of the Sarafan Brotherhood, deemed impossible for any man to penetrate. <laughs> impossible for any man. Deep within these walls my prey awaited. Mobius the Time Streamer, deceiver and eternal gamester, using living beings as his pawns. In the end, we'd rooted out an entire nest of the fiends. But we had swept that area already. Not well enough, but no matter. We purged every last one of that brute with fire where their souls now rest. Lord Mobius will be pleased. It was time for Mobius to answer a few questions. I hoped for his sake to find him in a forthcoming mood. Okay, here we are. Finally getting a chance for a little bit of gameplay. And you see, everything um, in this game is going to be played in a slightly more Devil May Cry style than in the previous Legacy of Cain and Soul Reaver games. Before, like, uh, I mean, if you watch the videos that I he previously produced, or uh, are a fan of the series, you know, the first game was like an overhead view um, Attack! game that kind of controlled like crap. It was an early PlayStation One title, all that kind of stuff. Once uh, Crystal Dynamics really got a hold of it, though, they went on. <laughs> really turned the series into something uh, more powerful on, like, a technical perspective. Damn it, I missed. So, I mean, like, between Soul Reaver, Soul Reaver 2, and Blood Omen 2, the game had evolved quite a bit, but they finally got this point where the, the gameplay is sort of Devil May Cry-like. It's not quite as fluid, and having been... We're about, um... A little over a decade removed when this game was produced, so it's dated as well. So it's kind of clunky and all that, but it's still alright, you know. Get some fun out of this game, I think. 
Okay, uh, it's a little difficult to figure out exactly when we are, this part of the game is taking place. It is necessary to feed, and the unusual event of a feast prepared by the Seraphan must be savored. It wasn't really necessary, but I'll do it anyway. I think there are other people in this room, too. Eh, not getting through there. Kane, if you are new to this series, and even if you're not, I'll review a little bit, you know. Kane is a vampire, and the vampires in the world of Nosgoth are a very, well, a somewhat different thing than traditional vampire lore. There's something I could have gotten around here. Hold on, let me pop back down. They're a little bit different because, I mean, the there's obviously different ways that a person can become a vampire, like Cain, for example, wasn't like he was bitten by a, by a vampire and he turned into one. He was a human who was murdered. Oh, here it is. In the beginning of the game, like, uh, Blood Omen Legacy of Cain. And he was resurrected by a necromancer who gave him a chance to go and sort of gain uh, retribution for his murder. What was that? Oh, God. The touch of water is like acid to a vampire. I had to find another way to pass. So a lot of this game, really like in the early uh, parts of the series, is very much based around Kane himself. As opposed to the later games in the series, which were, seem to be focusing more on the character of Raziel, which we'll get to in an episode or two. Cain is, uh, from what we previously established in earlier, um, in episodes of earlier series, like Soul Reaver 2 and all that, and Blood Omen 2, the vampires, which Cain is one of, are not really true vampires. What they are is essentially just humans who have been inflicted with a kind of blood curse that vampires have. This passage undoubtedly led to the Time Streamer. My prey was nearly in my grasp. But the door had been sealed by a blessed barrier. As I approached, the Reaver resonated in response. Perhaps its dark sorcery could dispel these holy barriers. There were original vampires, and they looked they were human looking, but they had like their blue skin and wings and all that kind of stuff. So they weren't really like. They were definitely not the same species as human, just in. Looked into some kind of virus or anything like that. And these vampires went to war with a another group of sort of powerful creatures called the Hilden. Now, how this war came to an end was the. Oh, there we go, gotta pick it up. Not gonna... The Hilden went, and uh, uh, there was a war between the two. Don't really know who started it or why it started yet, or what anybody was trying to gain by doing it. But the war was eventually ended by the by the vampires sealing the Hilden away in another sort of like hellish dimension. Now the Hilden did not. Uh, hold on. Locked. 
What a love of doors these pathetic humans have. The Hilden didn't just fade away quietly. They went and they actually managed to get one up on the vampires by inflicting that blood curse, which requires them to drink the blood of humans or even animals, as we've seen previously. Ah, hold on, we got a cutscene coming up. Did you not see me coming? Haha! <laughs> Kane is a powerful son of a bitch in this in this game. Especially if you like use him right, missing around and all that kind of stuff. Like these devil may cry like upward shots. And you can feed the reef. Because you know, it loves it some some blood. This emblem was unmistakably of vampire origin and designed to enhance the Reaver's power. But this coincidence seemed too convenient. Mobius clearly meant for me to find it. Sound the alarm! Vampire! Uh, of course. Don't let him escape! Surround him! Surrender, fiend, and we will promise you an easy death. I could promise you the same, but it would be a lie. The more you, uh... Obviously, enemies later on in the game will be a little more challenging than this. These are just more or less the basic enemies. But, you know, you get the idea of Kane being able to zip around the screen and all that kind of stuff. You really you get a better idea for how he's supposed to be like this ultra powerful creature that just slaughters his way through everyone. Hey, on your back. Seems much more powerful than he did in the earlier games. And he really should be, because this is sort of later on in his life. This barrier had a curious resonating effect on the Reaver. Well, anyway, the Hilden inflicted the blood curse on the vampires. But the... So, vampires were essentially turned into monsters, and the Hilden were locked away in a hell dimension. But in order to ensure that the Hilden stayed out, in order to ensure that the Hilden stayed in that sort of hell that they were banished to, they were essentially like this construct called the Pillars of Nazgoth. Essentially these gigantic pillars that shoot endlessly into the sky. Die, vampire! And make like... Kind of a weird thing. Doesn't really make any sense. This door had been equipped with a singular lock, requiring an unusual key. Somehow, I would find it. Yes, find a key. These pillars require guardians, people who essentially just sort of watch over it and be like... And there were... how many guardians were there? Seven guardians or something like that? And these were originally intended to be vampires, but, I mean, the vampire population, I'm talking like original vampires, not like Kane-style vampires, blue skin jobs. Well, that didn't really end up working out too well with them, and eventually the pillars, the choose guardians at their birth, decided to go and, um, 
has started choosing humans to be guardians, and being a pillar guardian has some perks. It essentially makes a person eternal. I mean, they can be killed, and in fact, the story does revolve around quite a few of them being killed. But, uh, for the most part, dummy, training dummy, a little late for this stage. You should have seen this thing about 15 minutes ago. Haha, <laughs> ah, whatever. The Pillar Guardians were essentially immortal. They could be killed, but they will never age, and, or maybe they would age, but they would never just die naturally. So you have certain Pillar Guardians, like Mortanius and Mobius and stuff, who lived extraordinarily long lives. And that kind of thing. It's really messed up, if you think about it. But <laughs> but in the beginning of Blood Omen, Legacy of Cain, there was this concept that hundreds of years before the start of the game, there was this crusade against the vampires of the world. And we're talking mostly about the human vampires by this point, not the blue skinned guys. And a lot of vampires were killed. I'm back in this room. Well, this crusade uh, killed so many vampires that the population was so reduced to such a small number that one of the last remaining vampires uh, but one of, the, one of the few remaining vampires still left in the world went and broke into the chamber of several men killer guardians and killed all the ones that we've seen, with the exception of uh, three. Uh, Malik, uh, he defeated Malik in a fight, but he didn't kill him. Also, uh, Martinius wasn't there, and neither was Moses, so they managed to survive. Sweet. That's a statue of Malik, by the way. I thought the uh, way through was over here. I'm not getting through here yet. Mortania, uh, Mortanius thinking Malak had... A side note. Mortanius thinking Malak had just dropped the ball, allowing the circle members to be killed, went and basically, like, ripped out his soul and bound it to his armor. And Malak was eventually fought as a boss in the first, uh, Legacy of Cain game. Where was that way through? Jeez, I was hoping this kind of crap wouldn't happen right here. No. No, damn it. <laughs> Making a fool of myself. Locked door, locked door. Is this my way through? But anyway, the entire thing ended up being... This is the way I came through earlier. The entire thing ended up being kind of a ruse. See, behind the whole thing was Mortania... Not Mortanius, uh, Mobius. He had the ability to sort of see things before they happened. Sort of, he wasn't, like, omniscient or anything like that. But he did have the ability to see things that happened in the future well before they were going to happen. Maybe that is the way I have to go, because it's the only door, literally the only door that's open. Mobius had the ability to sort of see things in the future before they were to happen, so he was manipulating time. Now, as it turns out, you can't really manipulate time well unless you have... Um, some sort of catalyst allowing you to change things, which he eventually gained in the Soul Reaper, the weapon that Kane's using right there. I'm gonna go this way, whether it's right or not. And using that power, he was able to um, essentially get Kane to start the war against the vampires 
by killing off, by traveling back in time and killing off. It's definitely the wrong way to go. Hold on, I'm going to cut the camera until I figure it out. Oh, here it is. I'm an idiot. Okay, what Mortanius did was essentially just sort of take advantage of a situation. That, you know, yep. Mortanius didn't really go and... Well, not Mortanius. Mobius didn't really set in motion the issues that Cain had to deal with. What had happened was that he just took advantage of it. What Mortanius... Or, damn it, I keep getting their name screwed up. Mobius ended up doing was taking advantage of the fact that one of the Pillar Guardians, hundreds of years after after their other ones were slaughtered, was murdered. Now, her uh, her name was Ariel, and her, her husband essentially went and lost his damn mind when he found her body. And rather correctly suspecting that as one of the fellow Pillar Guardians responsible, he essentially cast a curse on all of them that they are afflicted with this madness. And this was the curse that Cain was cast in the first game with ridding the world of. It was thought that the pillars needed to be secured because nobody really understood what the pillars were at the time, and they would need to be they would need to be cleansed of his corruption if the world were going to survive. Now, nah, that, whether that's true or not, uh, uh, maybe. But the pillars being sick with the corruption was definitely not a good thing. So Cain went and he killed off the corrupted uh, pillar guardians, and then eventually found out that Mobius had took advantage of that situation in order to start the war against the vampires. And with his crusade in order, Mobius was eventually killed. Now, Mobius obviously, since you can see the future, knew that doing this would kill, get him killed. But, uh, there we go. Uh, vampires can't touch water. Uh, hold on, I'm gonna finish what I'm saying before I go over there. Mobius went and used Cain to start a crusade against the vampires, basically killed off all the vampires, pretty much sacrificing his own life. But the way the world worked out didn't really end up that well. Cain refused to sacrifice himself in the end, realizing that he himself was a pillar guardian. And the pillars continued their sickness and then eventually collapsed. Cain raised a vampire army eventually and took over the world and pretty much destroyed it. The world that you see in Soul Reaver is Kane's doing. So much of this game we're going to see is based around Kane trying to correct the mistakes he's made in the past. Because although Kane is definitely an evil person, he's not one, he's not just viciously evil for the sake of evil. Yes, I understand. It will be done. The stage is set. You needn't linger in the shadows, Cain. It has been a long time, hasn't it? No banter, Mobius. You know why I'm here. Yes, Raziel. You sought to introduce your own pawn into this game. And now he's been swept from the board. By your hand, I suspect. Where is he? Perhaps you should ask, when? <laughs> How humiliating it must be for you to come begging at my doorstep for answers. Enough wordplay. Don't threaten me, Ken. You see, I have the upper hand. How remarkable that the great Cain should succumb to the scepter's power like any common vampire. <clears throat> Still so arrogant after all these years, thinking you've devised some brilliant plan. You know nothing. You have read the signs, but missed their meaning. 
You believe you are that myth of vampire prophecy, the scion of balance, and that Raziel holds the key to fulfilling your destiny. <coughs> but your messianic delusions have blinded you to Raziel's true nature. You have no idea what you've unleashed. There was a time when you might have heeded wise counsel when it was offered. Now, your vanity has made you witless. You will have to learn the truth for yourself. You'll be needing this. Your strength will return after I have departed. But by then, you will have more urgent concerns than pursuing me. Perhaps, when we next meet, you will have learned a little humility. What a prick. These strange creatures seem to manifest from the very shadows. These weird shadow things are the monsters that Raziel has played. Uh, I mean, maybe they have some of that version of that that occurred in the first part of the game, but I don't know. Maybe they're just demons or something. I don't know. So, Mobius's attempt at stopping me was not one of his better efforts. When I found him, it would be my turn to offer a few surprises. <laughs> 